Seeker. Hello, this is the Plug Seeker. Welcome back to my second episode on my Scotland road trip. In the first episode, I shared my journey in my 30 kilowatt Nissan Leaf from Surrey all the way up to Glasgow. This was a 480 mile trip and it involved six different rapid charges. If you haven't seen my earlier video, please check out my channel for the video before this one. And as you can see here, I had a chance to catch up with fellow YouTubers, Craig and James at my second stop. And having completed my trip, it was time for a bite to eat and an early night. And I was up fresh and early the next morning as I was attending a three day conference at the SEC Center. I had chosen to stay in the Glasgow Ibis Budget Hotel, which although it was a little bit cheap and cheerful, was a convenient 15 minute walk to the SEC Center. As well as being very reasonably priced, it also provided free parking for the duration of my trip. And it's nice to see that on two different days I saw parked Nissan Leafs. And on my walk, I also came across a seven kilowatt charger outside the Radisson Hotel. And as you can see, I have updated the details and the photo on PlugShare. Now at the SEC Center, there is a car park with a rapid charger. However, this car park was a little bit more expensive and so I chose to park my car at the hotel for the duration of my stay. The exhibition and trade center in Glasgow comprises of three main buildings. There is the aptly named Armadillo Auditorium, pictured here, as well as the SSC Hydro Arena and the main SEC center, which was where our conference was held. Now about half a mile away from the SEC Center was the Riverside Museum. Now this is a hyper modern transport museum with a collection of historical vehicles. And as you can see, it also has a pair of rapid chargers. So I came here in the evening on the last day to get a top up for my trip home. In addition to the two rapid chargers, as you can see, there were also two seven kilowatt chargers as well. This is obviously a popular site as there was a Mark 1 and a Mark 2 leaf charging as well as an electric taxi. Now this was the first time I had had a chance to see one of these LEVC electric black cabs in person and the driver was extremely keen and kind enough to let me have a look around. And I have to say I was really impressed. This is an extremely modern looking and well put together electric vehicle. And suffices to say, if I see one of these in a long line of fossil fuel taxis, this is the one I'm going to pick. And by the time I'd finished 10 minutes looking around this electric taxi, the Mark II Nissan Leaf had finished and it was my turn to plug in.
Good morning, this is The Plug Seeker. Uh, welcome to my second episode. This is my return journey from Glasgow back down south to Caterham. I didn't film the start of this, uh, this journey because I was in a rush to ha get on the road as soon as possible. But as you can see, I have stopped at my first location, which is right here. And I am already charging on the rapid charger, which I have activated using the CYC RFID card, which was kindly lent to me today. I also practiced um, using the CYC app and that worked fine as well. I will do a quick more detailed episode on the activation of this charger and I'll release that as a separate episode. Anyway, for now I'm charging up nicely. The battery temperature is not looking too bad at the moment, it's only about 4. I'm going to continue to put up the battery temperature and I'll uh, check it on the bars and also using the leaf spy. So we get an idea of how the battery fares on the return journey. I will also put up the driving times and how long it's taken to charge and how quick the charges were. And we'll have a little look at all the different charges on the way up. Uh, this location, not too bad. Um, it is a little bit of an isolated car park next to a woodland. So uh, I would bear in mind if you're charging here late at night, this is a little bit isolated, but it's fine during the daytime. Um, there's not a lot around here, but there is a... Um, there is a petrol station just down the road, which I'm sure you could use uh, to get snacks and have a little leak. Um, otherwise, there's not many facilities at this charging location. And after I finish here, my next stop will be here. And I'll see you when I get there.
Right, second stop. I have arrived at the Regard Centre. Um, I'll show you the details of this charger right here. Um, and I arrived with 11%. And that was going at a reasonably steady 65, 70 miles an hour roughly. And it's got a bit cold. It's dropped down to 3 degrees. Um, I'll put some details um, about uh, how the car is doing. Uh, battery temperature and so on but uh, actually it's still at six bars which is the same as it was when I left uh, temperatures about the same about 35 degrees and um, the overall efficiency for the whole trip so far um, has dropped slightly to about 3.8 miles per kilowatt but that's off doing a lot of Scottish hills on the way here as well and obviously the efficiency will be a bit lower because it's so cold um, but yeah all in all no problems traffic fine got here fine um, it was easier to find the charger in the daytime on the way up. I actually did a few uh, laps of this car park trying to find it in the dark, but uh, obviously knowing where it was, I found it first time. And as you can see, it's on free of end, which means it isn't going to cost me anything. So that's always a bonus. So I'm going to charge up here. Um, I'll put a little bit of information afterwards about uh, the state of the battery and uh, the charge when I leave. And I'll see you when I get to the next charger, number three. Uh, the next charger will be a Nissan garage. I have to get, hopefully get there before they close. Although it does say on plug share they're open until seven o'clock, but we'll see. Um, but uh, presumably if I get there before five, which I should do, I should be fine. Um, by the way, sorry about the color in this video. It's uh, unfortunately the, uh, we start, it's a bit cloudy and we're starting to go into dusk, so uh, the colour quality is uh, dropping a bit, so uh, sorry about that. Right, so I will see you when we get to the next charger. Until then. Right, hello again. Made it to my next stop. Um, took me a little bit longer than I'd expected. It's just gone six o'clock. Uh, this is my third stop and it's Chorley Nissan. Uh, I rang ahead while I was waiting to charge the last stop and asked if they would be happy to let me use their charger. Um, I think it's always good, especially if you're relying on it like I was, to make sure that it's uh, available and uh, what time they close. Now, pleased to hear they close at seven o'clock. Uh, so I've got here just after six, so it should be fine. 
um, the the main uh, Nissan dealership. Um, you can you can go inside. It's open till seven. That's brilliant. Um, so that's a relief, and it's charging away nicely. Um, so this is the uh, location of this Chorley Nissan. I'll put up the plug share link here. Okay. Um, so my next stop will be in near Birmingham in one of the Holiday Inns, and uh, this is the location of my next stop here. Now in terms of how we're going so far, I will put up some more information in a moment, but uh, basically the battery temperature was at 8 bars, uh, and I think that was about 44 degrees on the leaf spy. So it has warmed up a little bit, as you might expect. Um, the temperature outside has been quite cold, it's been around 3 degrees. Um, I think that's helped the battery, but unfortunately it has also meant my range has gone down quite a lot. Um, I noticed about halfway in the last leg, my uh, guessometer was uh, getting lower and lower, getting close to the actual mileage. Now I never rely on the guessometer being too close to the actual range I'm expecting. Um, so if it starts to get close, I think that's a sign to ease back a little bit on the throttle. Um, same goes for the percentage. As a rough rule of thumb, I find in my in my in my 30 kilowatt Nissan Leaf, about aim about one percent uh, to one mile on range. That will vary a little bit depending on the terrain and the outdoor temperature, but it's a reasonable rough guess. Um, so you, I would always try to stay about uh, 10 to 15 percent higher on my percentage than the number of miles in my range. I mean that's just a kind of rough rule of thumb that I tend to work by. Uh, and it got me here at a, with 6% remaining, which was fine. Um, I did check ahead to make sure this was a reliable um, location on PlugShare, and it's had some good recent ratings. Uh, I would always suggest it's worth doing that, because you don't want to get there at 6% and find it's not working, and then have just 6% uh, to get to the next station. Um, so it is always good to check out ahead. Um, so far, I've never come unstuck, though. And I think uh, once you've been doing this uh, electric car driving for a very short time, you should soon get the hang of it and uh, you understand your car and how far it will take you. Um, and to be honest, same goes for a petrol car. You, you work out how far a petrol car will take you. So it just requires just that little bit of extra thinking. Um, anyway, right. So I'll leave it there. I will be heading off as soon as I've charged up. I'll put the stats of the finishing temperature and percentage of the battery when I leave. And uh, I won't bother recording the road from here because, let's be honest, one motorway at night is as much like another motorway at night. Um, so I'll leave the, um, the motorway recording for now. And I will catch up when I arrive at the next location. So I'll see you then. Hello again, right, we are now at stop number four. And this is one of the Polar Chargers at a Holiday Inn near Birmingham. And I'll put a link here. This is the location. And I arrived with 16% and the battery temperature had gone down to eight bars and was at about 44%. And I'll put all the details in in a minute. So, um, as always, 
Polar Network by Chargemaster, now owned by BP. Um, hands down, still my favorite network. Um, vast majority of time, it's the most reliable and one of the fastest. And if you charge more than two times in a month, you save the monthly fee, at least at the time of making of this video, with the prices as they were. So, my efficiency for the whole trip so far up to this point is 3.8 miles per kilowatt hour. And for the last trek, I use um, a little bit less power than expected, mainly because um, at least three quarters of it was 50 miles an hour due to roadworks, which on the plus side means I won't have to wait as long to charge up here. On the other hand, it did take longer to get here. So I think it, it, it tends to balance itself out a little bit. Um, in fact, that's one of the other joys I would say about driving an electric car as opposed to a fossil fuel car. In a fossil fuel car, if you get stuck in 40, 50 mile traffic, it's a real pain in the jack seat and it really drives you nuts. Um, on the other hand, if you're driving an electric car, yes, you realize that your journey has slowed down. On the other hand, you get the uh, slight positive vibe of knowing that you're using far less power and therefore you won't need to charge as much at your next stop. So yeah, there's another plus point for driving electric cars. Anyway, Right, well, I, I have to say, um, during this journey, I have been doing stops at roughly every 60 to 80 miles. And I think 80 miles in this sort of cold winter temperatures in the Nissan Leaf 30 kilowatt is about as far as I take it. 84 was the longest um, stretch. Um, I think you can push it more, especially if you're an experienced long distance driver like James and Kate or, um, or John Porterfield. On the other hand, if you don't do really long trips all that often, I reckon 80 miles is a good um, sort of maximum to do between stops. Um, and also, as Robert Llewellyn is so often fond of reminding us, I would say an hour to an hour and 20 minutes is about the normal um, bladder range time as well. Um, speaking of which, I'm going to finish this off soon because I think I need to pop indoors to the little boys' room as well. Now. These Polar um, chargers at the Holiday Inns are really good. Um, I stopped at several, as you remember, on the way up here. The Holiday Inns are really welcoming. They're comfortable. They often have free Wi-Fi. And it's a nice place to get a coffee and a snack in the warm. Um, so that's what I'm going to do in a minute. One of the things I would point out during this trip, I, one of my um, rough rules of thumb uh, is whenever, whatever my range I'm planning to drive, for the next stretch on a motorway um, journey. I usually take that range, add about 10 to 15 on top of the figure, and that's the percentage I roughly aim to charge to. So for an instance, uh, for an 80 mile stretch, I roughly try to change, charge to about 95 roughly. A 60 mile stretch to about 75 minimum percentage. Um, it's not a perfect rule, but as a rough rule of thumb, it works. And then when you're driving to the next charger, to the next destination, you can see if you're still maintaining that gap. If you see it starting to narrow, that can be a signal that maybe you need to ease back a little bit. If you find that that gap is, is getting larger, then you might be able to put your foot down a bit more. Um, I find that's a, a method that works nicely for me, um, but each to their own. Um, Obviously, with a newer long-range um, EVs that are coming out, the 60 kilowatts uh, and the 64 kilowatts, the likes of the Kona, then really, I don't know, I say range anxiety will be a thing of the past, really, after that. I mean, I don't get range anxiety, but you're going to have to, uh, if you've got a range of about 200 plus miles, you're not really going to have to put that much thought into it uh, on your long-distance treks. Uh, if I was in a Kona, this trek would have only been maybe three stops as opposed to six. Uh, oh, actually, I'm hoping for five on the way back. But um, yeah, with the no new longer range uh, EVs, I think the level of planning is gonna go down and that's only gonna encourage uh, new drivers, I think. Um, anyway, I'm gonna stop talking for now. I will post again um, some of the details of the battery and the percentage when I finish charging. Um, and then I'm gonna head straight off. Uh, I'm not gonna, as I said before, I'm not gonna do any more road filming, mainly because there's not a lot to see with my uh, puny iPhone uh, as a camera in the dark. You're not So um, I shall catch you again at the next charger. And that'll be the fifth 
possibly the final charger. We'll have to wait and see. See you then. Okay, good evening, right. This is the fifth and hopefully the final stop. And this is at the M40 services, uh, not far from Oxford, I believe. Oops, let me turn the light on. Um, I'll put a link here to the plug share location for this uh, charger. This is an Ecotricity and it's on free vend. So that's always a good. So uh, this time it didn't cost me anything. So. Uh, all in all, it's been uh, quite a cheap trip on the way down here. Anyway, so I got here with 8% and 9 on the battery temperature bar. It's just coming up to 10 past 11. I'm going to charge pretty much up to about 90% or so. And I'm hoping then to make it all the way home from here without a final charge. Um, so... I'll put up some statistics for the last charge, well, hope for the last charge, um, after this uh, is finished. And uh, I'll do one more quick chat just before I leave. Okay, uh, finished what I think is going to be my last charge. So it's uh, got me up to 95%. Uh, it's only taken about half an hour, so that's not too bad. Had a chance to have a quick uh, snack and a sandwich in the uh, motorway service station. Uh, the battery temperature has gone into the red. It's up to the 11th bar, which is the second highest uh, on the battery temperature. And the leaf spy confirms it's up to uh, about, I think it's about 54 degrees. So it is hot. Sorry, let me just cancel that. Yeah, so it has got a bit hotter, but it should be fine. It should cool down on the next bit. Um, I'm not sure if it, if anyone else has found this, but I, I'm wondering whether having it on drive rather than on the B regeneration mode um, might mean that uh, when you're going down a hill, you're freewheeling a little bit more or less on the regenerative braking. 
and wonder if that might help uh, cooling down the battery a little bit. It seems to have some effect on the way down here, um, but I'm not sure because it does. It did seem to actually cool a little bit on B mode or D mode. Um, I just did the last leg mainly on B mode. And it didn't seem to make much difference. It still cooled down a bit. Anyway, I'm not going to really bother filming the road as I said before, but I will um, put up some stats on the last charge and um, I'll see you when I get back to Caterham. Hopefully it won't require any more stops. Fingers crossed. All right, see you in a minute. Right, that's it. I've done it. I've arrived. I'm afraid it's two o'clock in the morning. Um, the last leg took me a little bit longer than expected. Um, unfortunately, the last two junctions of the M25 before mine, there was a diversion and I was diverted off across country, which probably cost me about another half an hour. Anyway, so I arrived here with 3% left. So the, uh, the diversion used a little bit more power than I'd expected. So uh, it was a little bit more fine than I would have otherwise been. Um, so 3%, but uh, still no Mr. Turtle. Um, and the uh, battery temperature when I arrived was back down to nine. Um, I'll put the Leaf Spy uh, details up uh, as well. So that's the end of my great Scottish road trip. Uh, thank you everyone who's followed me on my video. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please don't forget to, if you enjoyed this video, to like it and hopefully to subscribe. Um, please share my video on um, social media like Facebook and Twitter if you can. That really helps my channel and I'd really appreciate it very much. And don't forget to also click the notifications bell to get new videos soon as they arrive. So I'm pretty tired now so I think I'm going to call it tonight. So thank you everyone for watching. This is the Plug Seeker signing out. Happy charging everyone.